The Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, has been overlooked on immigration reform planning as the Prime Minister prepares to relax visa rules as part of her push for growth. It's reported that Tory MPs with concerns about local businesses being short-staffed are being told to go to the Cabinet Office and Business Department rather than the Home Office, as around 36,000 people have arrived in the UK by crossing the Channel. I'm asking, what immigration reforms do we need? Joining me now is the political commentator Matt Stadlin and Nick Marcel Tanconi, the Chief Operating Officer of Turning Point UK. Uh, I'll turn to my far left and start with you, Matt. You're not your far left, you're near left. <laughs> well, you're moderate well, left. Whatever. Um, do you th- what kind of reforms do you think we need in immigration at this moment? Look, if you talk to restaurateurs, people who are trying to make a living by serving the rest of us, yeah. they are desperate for more workers. We don't have enough workers in this country at the moment. So we need to sort that out, I think, as a matter of urgency. If you talk to hospital workers as well, huge numbers of people who upholstered our NHS seem to have left since Brexit or since the referendum. So we need to sort that out as well. But we also need to sort out the fact that a large number of people are coming here using dangerous means, and no doubt some or many of them are coming here without real justification. We need to get a serious grip on that. We want more people, but people should come the right way. OK, I'm going to turn to you, Nick, because two-thirds of Matt's points are that we need more cheap labour. What would you suggest in an alternative to that? Well, I'm very happy to be here to talk to you about the Conservative pledge that myself and a few individuals within the Conservative, prominent individuals within the Conservative community have put together. And that Conservative pledge is a five-point plan. Um, And, of course, I I completely understand uh, what's what's been said. The the low-wage, cheap labour argument, um, it doesn't hold uh, much water with me. I think that... um, Well, 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 Nick, let's go through the five points. What are the five points you've put together? So, um, first and foremost, we want to reduce... So, uh, around a million um, visas were dished out in the last year or so. And so, pre-2019, it was about half a million. So, it's not sort of stabilising and or even reducing. It's actually just jumped up massively. So, uh, we want to reduce that down by 2025 to uh, less than 100,000 a year. Less than 100,000 immigration in total? In, yeah, in, in total. So we, we want um, NPs and our grassroots to be say, singing from the same song sheet and saying, yeah, this is, this is item one. And item two is anyone who uh, comes here who within five years, regardless, if they're a foreign national, regardless of uh, their status or what they've achieved, uh, within five years if they commit a crime, they're deported. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to start talking about um, incentivising uh, people to start families and to have big families, and we want them to be financially uh, incentivised. Generally speaking, that's, that's the approach, very much like Auburn's doing in, in, in Hungary. Um, and we also want to um, be talking about um, uh, solidarity with regards to building offshore uh, deportation housing, because you need short-term uh, uh, solutions and there needs to be long-term as well. So Australia have done something similar. Um, it's not with the, uh, um, out of the realms of possibility, um, but that's th- those are the main points. That okay. you've, you've both right. mentioned so the word cheap, ch- words cheap labour, yep. which you've put into my mouth. I never mentioned the words cheap labour. Okay. You extrapolated that. Oh, so let's it, expand on it, well, it, yeah, let, Why let's, we need more labour? Let, let's expand on rather than if you have gaps. Talent. If you have gaps in the labour market, mm. you've got to try and work out why there are those gaps. It is possible that the wages are simply too low. So we could give up on the service industry and say, well, we can't afford a service industry, except that the service industry in its many and multifold forms Mm. is crucial to our economy. It may be simply that because we've been part of the EU or were part of the EU for such a long time, that people who are born in this country, grown up in this country, don't want to do those sorts of jobs. That's that's up to them. They don't have to. But the fact is we've got holes in our economy... And we have to fill those. Could it be that people do want to do a, a good hard day's work for a, a good day's pay, but they're getting undercut by people who are coming in and willing to work a lot cheaper? I don't think that's the case because, as I say, there are gaps. If they're being undercut, there wouldn't be the gaps. OK. I mean, there are definitely gaps in some areas, but in other areas I'm hearing from a lot of people, especially in manual labour, that their positions are being undercut by people who are coming in from Eastern Europe who work a lot cheaper. Well, one of the things that I think is really important in this whole debate is that there is nuance. You don't have to be absolutely against immigration. You don't have to hate asylum seekers or hate would-be no, immigrants. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah. And you don't have to be pro-open borders. Mm. I don't hate people who want to come to this country 
and I'm not pro open borders. We need to have a robust system that is fair yeah. and something that we need to do. I think our relationship with France has almost inevitably weakened since Brexit. You now have people who are trying to get to the launch points in northern France being given, apparently, according to reports in the newspapers, a free bus ride mm. to the launch points. Mm. That's because, it seems to me, France aren't playing their part, no. and perhaps deliberately so. So we desperately need to work with our allies across the channel to prevent that. They need to get a grip, mm. and our Home Office needs to get a grip, but it needs to do so fairly and not cruelly and not send people to countries like Rwanda from which people try to seek asylum.